Hi guys, welcome everyone. My name is Vera and today I'm going to show you how to paint our three birches right here. Now before we start, let's go through our supplies quickly. What are you going to need for today is you're going to need a canvas of any size. I will be using nine, oh, sorry, 8 by 10 inch canvas. It's pretty small as you can see in comparison to my hand and my hands are pretty tiny as well. So any size will work though. You don't have to go this small. You can definitely go much, much bigger than that and it will still look really wonderful. All right, what else are you going to need? You're going to need paint. I'm going to be using acrylic paint primary colors only, which is blue, red, white, yellow, and black. As far as which particular shades, um, for a blue one, ideally you would like either primary blue or phthalo blue, so one of those two, or any blue that has a greener undertone. For pink, you want pink with more of a magenta undertone, so like a, sorry, for red, you want um, red with magenta undertone, so more like a dark pink. It should not have any orange tint to it. So any red without orange tint to it, but with pink tint to it instead will work. As far as white, yellow, and black, you can use absolutely any. We're going to need a paper towel of some kind or reusable fabric cloth, and we're going to need water. And of course, brushes. We're going to need a couple of different brushes. Ideally, you want to have about three different brushes. If you don't have three and you only have two, that's more than enough as well, and I'll tell you why. So we're going to need one larger brush for our background. Now for this um, size canvas, I'm going to be using, this is number 11 for those who are wondering, but don't really go by numbers. Something medium large, so medium to medium large. This is what I'm going to be using for my background here and maybe for some dabbing. Um, Another brush that I'm going to be using is a pointy brush. So it's still medium, but pointy brush. So that's why I'm saying you could technically get away with one. You don't have to have two brushes because they're both about medium to medium large brushes. It's just I prefer personally a pointy brush for dabs for my um, tree, for my leaves, and for flowers. But I prefer a square brush for the background and for the tree trunks. So that's why I'm using two. However, either one of those will work just fine for all those elements. So you don't really have to have both, just one is enough. And of course, you're going to need one small pointy detailed brush. So number zero or number one or number two, something really, really small. That's pretty much all that you're going to need for today. Now guys, please refer, when I will show, be showing you colors, please refer to this image. For some reason, um, I switched to different lights and my camera is not picking up all the shades properly now so you will see colors more vibrant here this is what it actually looks like just for some reason it auto corrects it to this um, not sure why but yeah just so you know I would say refer to this for colors this is more accurate on the image here than on my camera right now all right guys and we're gonna be mixing all our colors however if you prefer to maybe use pre-mixed purple, you're welcome to use that, or if you have premix green you would like to use, you're welcome to use that as well. And guys, remember, this is a video tutorial, so it's pre-recorded. So if you need to pause it at any time, please do that. And also, it's going to stay on our YouTube forever. So if something comes up and um, you have to go and you can't finish it today, that's okay. You can come back and finish it any other day. And also, um, Again, if you find that my pace is a little too fast for you, that's all right. We all work at our own paces. So I would say if you're watching it in the premiere and you cannot pause it, just wait until premiere is done and then go back to it and you're going to be able to pause it at any point. So that's all I wanted to mention right away. And now let's dive into painting. So I'm going to grab my canvas and the first thing I'm going to work on is going to be my background. So there is going to be light blue here. You see, we're going to start with that light blue on top. Again, I refer to here. You can even use a light teal. Then we're going to move on to light purple and we're going to blend that into our light blue. And then we're going to add just a couple streaks of pink. So there is nice pink here. And again, you're going to see the vibrancy of that pink on this image much better. So we're going to strike a couple of our strokes from the bottom up of that light pink. And then we're going to finish up with light green on the bottom. So the super, super light green is like a nice light grass green. So that's what we're going to do in the bottom. After that, we're going to add our three birches. 
So this three white tree trunks, just three white tree trunks, that's it. After we have that, we're gonna move on to this darker purple. There's a darker purple on the back and just a couple of strips of blue. And we're gonna do that. After that, we're gonna move on to um, the first layer of green underneath. It's the, so there is a dark green. As you can see, it's peeking through, like right here, a little bit there. But underneath that light green, there's a first layer of dark green. So we're gonna lay that first layer of dark green. And then we're gonna move on to black and we're gonna outline our trees and we're just gonna um, add a couple of brush strokes in our trees to add that beautiful birch texture. And then we're gonna move on to flower. Oh, sorry, we're gonna add a bit of um, black here to on the bottom. Then we're gonna need to wait until all of this dries or at least dries enough for us to keep working on it. And then we're gonna add flowers and leaves. And leaves we're gonna add in two different colors, light green and then almost like a yellowy, a mixture of yellow and light green and white. And here we're gonna do all kinds of colors. And you can do your own colors too. You don't even have to follow me on this color. So you can do whichever colors make you happy there. So that's pretty much it. In no particular order actually, the top and the bottom. Doesn't matter which one we start, the top or the bottom whichever. So right now we're just going to do the background. So I'm going to switch my canvas and by the way again guys feel free to refer to everything on the side here. So I'm going to start by grabbing my large square brush. Well not really large, about medium large. I'm going to take my water and I'm going to make a light blue paint. So I'm going to scoop some white on the side I'm going to add a little bit of blue. I think this should be a good color, but if you feel like you personally want to go a little darker, that's okay too. I just wouldn't go any lighter than this probably. And so we're going to start adding it at, until about half, maybe a little bit lower than half. And guys, let's talk about edges right away. Um, I know a lot of people love doing edges, color matching the edges to the painting. A lot of people like the look of edge looking like you finished your image and image went all the way onto the edge of your canvas. If that's you and you would like that to happen for your painting, as you paint, every time when you go to the edge, you wanna add your color on the edge of your canvas. Wherever the paint touches the edge, you're gonna color in the edge as well. In my case, that's not my favorite look, so I'm not gonna be doing it. I like it, I don't mind it. It's not that I don't like the look. I don't mind it, but I do like more having a black frame. So I usually paint my edges with black. And also because I am teaching this tutorial, <laughs> I don't wanna have um, you watch me do extra work that's not really relevant, such as coloring the edges. So that's why I'm not gonna be doing it, but I do wanna mention it at the beginning of this tutorial, just in case that's something you would be interested in doing. And it is a good look. I highly encourage you to consider it, especially on a painting like this when there are not a hundred million details that need to go on the edges. It's not gonna take you much longer to do that. And it is a good look. And if you don't like it in the end, you can always cover it up. But also don't worry about it if you would rather not, because you can always do that later too. So, blue. Now, without waiting anymore, and by the way, I used quite a bit of paint. Not a lot, but as you can see, everything is wet. It didn't dry right away, and I'm not dry brushing at all. I'm using a good amount of paint. Now, right away, before this dries, I'm gonna make light purple. Light purple is super simple. I'm gonna make a little bit more of light blue, and then I'm just gonna add a smidge of red. And I'm gonna end up with a light purple. Okay, this is good. Don't know if it's the right color, but I'm gonna try and we'll see. Oh, my camera got a little out of focus. Okay guys, let me bring my camera into focus first before I do this. All right, my camera is back into focus. And now we're gonna bring it from the bottom. So you're gonna bring it a little bit, you're gonna start it a little bit lower. You see the new blue. And you're gonna flip it up.
And I'm going to unscrew my brush with purple and I'm going to go a little further. This time you don't use that much paint, you use way less paint because it needs to be almost dry brushed over your blue there. And then you can wash off your brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and with a clean wet brush, slightly, slightly wet, you can go over where the two colors connect and spread them just a little bit. If you need to. If not, you can just keep that. Keep it what you did first. So basically, the flicking from the bottom up. You don't have to blend them. If you start blending and you feel like, oh, oh, oh you're making a mess, just stop. Don't do it. It's fine. It doesn't need to be done. And then I'm gonna let it dry by the way before I do pink but I do want to do my green right away so I'm gonna make my light green which I'm gonna start with white again and I'm gonna put, scoop some yellow mix them up and I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue do you see how little very very little or maybe a little bit more but still a very very little amount of blue you don't need much, but it's always much easier to add more blue if you didn't add enough at first. Then redo it because you added too much blue. Blue is very powerful color in comparison to white and yellow, and it's going to overtake it so fast. So this is beautiful bright yellow, uh, sorry, bright green. And I'm going to bring it from the bottom up, and I'm not going to blend it this time. So this is just flicking from the bottom up. I'm going to start flicking slightly on a curve here. This is slightly on angle and curved. You want your green to slightly overlap your purple. Right, and now I'm gonna add a little bit of that bright pink. So I'm gonna wash my brush really well because green is not very compatible color with pink as far as mixing. And I'm gonna start with white again. I'm gonna scoop some white on the side. I'm gonna add a little bit of red, mix them up, make nice, beautiful, vibrant pink. You see, I'm adding color little by little until I arrive at the right color. So just touch by touch. Continue adding your pink until you feel like, oh, that's the one. I think that for me, this is a good color. And I'm gonna add a couple flicks. So I'm gonna add a flick here. And then add a flick here. Honestly, wherever you want it to be. There are no particular spots that you have to have. Wherever you add it, that's where it's gonna be. It may look a little weird right now, but trust me, it will all fall, fall into place once we have everything else. Okay, this is great. This is just an underlay for us. Now I'm going to wash off my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and I'm going to grab straight white, and I'm going to position my three tree trunks. You can do them straight, you can do them slightly on the angle, so my middle one is going to be fairly straight, it's not going to be a perfect straight, but it's going to be fairly straight. Then this one is going to be slightly curved. This one is going to be, so basically this two are going to be slightly on angle like this. So if this one's straight, this two slightly like that. And you can give them a bit of a curve if you want to. They don't have to be just, you know, straight on the angle. It's up to you because there are, those are trees. So I'm just going to start by putting one line at first, just one line. Yeah, now I'm going to turn that line into tree. So I'm going to make it less straight, a little thicker. And with the tree trunks, you always want to make them at least a little bit thicker on the bottom and thinner on top. Because that's how trees are. They're always thicker where they grow from and thinner on top. All right, that's the base for my tree trunk number one. Now I'm going to do tree trunk number two. 
And I'm going to start with just one line. I'm going to make it thicker on the bottom. And third one right here. And again, I'm going to turn it into a proper tree trunk by making it a little thicker on the bottom. And on top, on top, I made it a little less straight. You see, I'm almost like flipping them a little bit into the grass on the bottom. No, it doesn't really matter. You're not going to see much of the bottom in the end, but it makes me happy, so that's why I'm doing it. All right, now we're going to add a smaller tree trunks and the branches. And you can continue using the same brush if you prefer, or you can switch. I think I'm going to switch to a different brush for this. So I'm going to wash off this brush first. I'll put it aside. And I'm going to switch to my small brush. I'll dip it in the water and I'm going to get some white. And now with this, um, I'm going to add my branches. You can add as many branches as you want, anywhere you want. The only thing that's important is that they all start from the tree trunk and they go out. So you don't start branch from the outside and bring it in. You always start it from the tree trunk and you bring it out. Because wherever you start, you're going to have a wider brush stroke. And all your branches need to be wider where they grow from and they grow from tree trunk. And they need to be thinner on the end. So it doesn't have to be like a massive difference between the beginning and the end, but they need to be a little bit thicker where they connect to a tree trunk. So I'm gonna push on my brush a little bit harder where I start. And I'm gonna slowly let it go. Enlarge it a little more into the tree as well. Here I'm going to add a lower one. On this one, Right, and now I'm going to add a couple of those um, smaller tree trunks. So I'm going to add a couple lines here. And again, always flick them from the bottom up. If, by the way, your green or your pink or your purple is still wet and some color gets on them, that's okay. That's actually a good thing, so don't worry about it because white is a very reflexive color. So everything white in nature will always reflect everything around it. So if we're looking at a photograph, we always see a bit of a reflection um, of colors nearby on your white. It may not be a lot, but there will always be some. If some color blends into your white, that's okay. That's a good thing.
Right, I have quite a few. I think that's good enough. Maybe I'll add a couple more in the back, just like a little flex. Not a full on tree trunks. Oh yeah, that's good. I like that. Awesome. I'm going to wash off my brush, my small brush, and I'll put it away. Next thing that I want to do is I want to add that purple color in the back here. Now, if you guys are totally not in rush, you're just so not in rush, you have all the time in the world, I probably suggest that you wait until all of this is dry. If you're somewhat in rush and you're just too eager to do this and you're excited, that's okay. You don't have to wait. You can just continue. Um, yeah. Just, you will have to be a little bit more careful. Now, what brushes are you going to use? Totally up to you here. So if you use a square brush, you're going to use the top edge. So you're not going to use the full width of a brush. You're going to use the top edge to get finer lines. You can use just the tip of your pointy brush as well. Or you can use the full width of your small brush. So either one of those brushes is fine. It really is up to you to decide which one seems most comfortable for you. Um, I don't know which one I should be using. doesn't really matter again. Let's use this one. We haven't used this one yet. So let's use this one. I'm going to start by mixing dark but warm purple. So I'm going to start with my red. I'll scoop some red on the side. Again, it should be a pink magenta based red. So not orangey, but with a pinker undertone. And then I'm going to add a little bit of blue. You don't need one mixing purple. You never need equal parts of red and blue. You always need way more red and less blue. Just because um, blue is just more dominant color, so you don't need as much of it. Especially if you're trying to make warmer purple. So this is purple, but it's very dark, so it almost looks like black. That's why I'm going to need to add some white. You may not need to add white, depending on the consistency of your paint. Some acrylic paint does come with a pre-mixed white in it. So if that's the case with yours, you're not going to need to add any white. If it looks purple, looks dark purple already, you don't need to mix it. In my case, it, all, it looked very dark, so I needed to mix a little bit of white. And with this, we're going to add brush strokes. Basically, just flicks up and down around this section where our green connects to our sky colors. We're going to try to avoid our tree trunks. If we get a little bit on our tree trunks, not a problem, but generally try to avoid them. So do you see? I start somewhere here and I do down, up, or up, down. So either, basically up and down. Now overlap top and overlap bottom. Purple in between my tree trunks. That one is done. Now, for the next color, is we're going to use ultramarine blue. So, what you could do, um, you could either just add to the same color we just used to this purple one. You can add a bit more blue, and it's going to get there because, again, as I mentioned, blue is very bossy color. It overtakes everything you add it in, especially if you add a lot of it. So, I just added to the same. So it has a purple hint, but it's still blue. Alternatively, you can just mix a new one and just mix this with a little bit of white, and that's it. I'm gonna add a couple of brush strokes in this. Right. 
Get a little bit more back here. Alright, I'm happy with this. But it looks like I lost my pink, so I'm gonna add my pink back. I really wanted it, but I accidentally covered it up. So I'm gonna take a little bit more white, mix it again with a smidge of red. Make my beautiful pink that I accidentally covered up. If you think it's in place, you don't need to do this. Just me adding things. I just add it right here. I wanted to have a bit more pink there. I don't like that it's all gone. Yeah, like that. Great, I did my pink back. I feel better now. Much, much better. Alright, you guys, let's move to our top and we're gonna start the first layer of green, the underlay of that dark green. You can use either your uh, pointy medium large brush or square medium large brush. I'm gonna go with square for this one. And I'm gonna mix my dark green. So you can mix on the same spot where you had light green or you can grab a different spot. It's totally up to you. Um, so we're going to mix a little bit of blue with yellow. This time you can do equal parts because you need dark color. And we're not going to be adding any weight. Unless you really want to, in which case you can add a little bit, but really it's not necessary for this color. This is just a nice darker green. You don't need to add black or anything like that. Just yellow and blue and I'm going to start dabbing it. I'm going to use my brush flat because I'm using square brush. So if you're using square brush you're going to use it flat. If you're using pointy brush you're going to use it like this, not flat. And we're just going to dab up some section on the top. It really is up to you how much you want to dab up but always start from the top while your brush is still fresh and has lots of paint on it. You want to go high and then you want to start spreading that paint down without refilling your brush. Do you see it gets lighter, lighter, lighter as you go down? Because you're just picking up fresh wet paint here and then you're spreading it down. Then you can refill your brush and go up again. Add a little bit there and then start spreading it down. And when you feel like you completely run out of paint in your brush, you can always go back up, pick up a little bit of that fresh red paint and continue spreading it down. Just down, 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 down. And then I'm going to continue here and I will finish it up and I'll start spreading more to the bottom. Same goes from, ed from the edge. You can always feel your brush and add it closer to the edge here and then spread it towards the middle. And you can have a lot of it or a little, it really depends on how much you want to see later. If you want to see a bit more underneath our um, light greenery, then you can add a bit more. If you don't want to see much of it, you just want to see maybe a spot here and there, then you don't have to add much of it. Because again, most of it we're just going to cover up. And if you guys are doing your edges, feel free to bring this right to the edge. So just color all your edges with this color. I'm not going to be doing it again because I'm not doing my edges. But if you are doing your edges, just color your edges to 
right away. You don't have to mix this color again later. All right, that's good. Now we can move to your black. So for black, I'm gonna start with my small brush. And I'm gonna take a little bit of black and I'm gonna add somewhat of an outline to my branches. Um, and then I'm gonna grab my square brush and I'll add just a couple of brush strokes merging them into my branch. Oh, sorry guys, before we move to black, let's do dark green on the bottom. Um, you can use, again, any brush. I'm gonna go with the sun for that. So I'm gonna make a little bit more because I'm out. I don't mix a lot of paint at the same time ever. I mix only what I need to because I find that it's easier to mix it again versus I hate wasting paint. I feel very sad when I mix a lot and then it goes to waste. So I always prefer to mix just a little bit and then remix it if needed so I don't waste any. So I'm just going to flick from the bottom up some dark green. You can flick a bit more in some areas and a bit less in others. Awesome. All right, moving to our black. So I'm going to grab my small brush and I'm going to water down my black just a little bit, not all of it. I'll take some on the side and I'll water down. And the reason why I water down it because I need to have fairly fine lines um, and black is hard for me to work with. And when you want to make fine lines of any color, you want to have more liquid paint. My paint generally is fairly thick. So if I don't water it down, a, I cannot make a long line. I'm going to be running out of paint maybe this much through. It's not going to let me do a long line. And B, it's going to be too thick. So no matter how good your brush is, if your paint is too thick, your line is going to be way too thick as well. So let's start with this one, just because I'm right-handed. So if I start here, I may possibly get into it. So I always start on the opposite side of what hand I'm using. So I'm just going to add a little outline. Follow this branch here. Couple brush strokes, you can somewhat blend it. Well, a couple lines here. You try not to make it look like you took a sharpie and outlined it. You want to make your outline out of smaller brush strokes versus you know just straight lines. You want to avoid using straight long lines. You want to use more of a smaller brush strokes. And some are bigger, some are smaller. You want to have that inconsistency. And if your white is still uh, wet and it starts blending, that's a good thing too. Don't worry about that one, just go with it. It's going to play with you in your favor in the end because you're going to have a bit of blending. If that's not the case and yours is already dry, that's okay. I wouldn't worry about that either. Moving to our middle tree. You see, I'm almost merging it into my tree with like a tiny, small brush strokes. Now here you want to almost dry brush it on. You don't want to use too much paint on because when you use too much paint in your brush, it gets blobby. Blobbiness is something you might want to avoid 
if you can. If and when possible. All right, so my trees are done. Um, now I'm gonna add a little brush strokes to my smaller trees. So for those, I'm not really gonna outline them. It's gonna be like flick here, flick there. I'm just gonna accentuate them a little bit. This is just a little flicks. And you can add even a couple lines that are not there currently, like a couple branches. But again, make sure they're very fine and um, they don't need to be taking attention from those three birches. That's pretty much the goal here. If you want them a little bit more visible, that's okay. If you want to have them, that's all right. They could add complexity to this painting. Just to make them too thick, they need to be quite thin and too blobby because then they're just going to take away, they will move the attention from the middle. To the sides and we don't want that. And while we're still on this color and on this brush, we're gonna flick some from the bottom too. Don't cover up all your dark green. You want to make an addition to it so the bottom is darker, but you don't want to cover up all your dark green. You want to see your dark green. Make sure this is an addition and not a cover up. All right, awesome. Now I'm going to switch my brush. I'm going to wash my small brush really, really well. I'm going to dry it on the paper towel and I'll put it aside and I'm going to grab my square brush again. By the way, if you have um, oops, a smaller square, square brush, let's say, let's find a smaller square brush. Let's say something like this. This would be more ideal brush for what we're about to do. Uh, because I didn't tell you to have that brush, we're going to continue using this one. And just to make it easier, so we stick with only three brushes, but a really smaller brush, smaller square brush would be the most ideal for this. But a uh, larger square brush is fine and medium brush is also fine, medium pointy brush is fine as well. So I'm going to take black just a little bit though. So do you see I'm not um, covering my whole brush with it, I'm just taking a little bit. So I can do this, see, half visible, um, transparent, dry brush, brush tricks. This is what you're looking for. If you have this much paint, that's way too much because we see the blobby, just a little bit of paint. If it's not enough, you can always get more. And we're going to start adding from the right side mostly. You can add for a couple from the left, but mostly from the right side. Just a couple of brush strokes to give our tree a little bit more texture. You see, I do them on a different angle. Now, when you need to, you can always refill your brush with paint. I'm going to make the top quite dark here. Now I'll add just a couple on this side too, just a few. 
Yes, right. A couple more for you to darken it up a little closer to the edge. Awesome. Now let's do the same on this one. I'm going to start with the right side. And I'm going to do a little bit on the left. Awesome. And then here. Okay, awesome. That looks wonderful. Exactly what I want. Now we need to let it dry. Um, I can't really do much here. And the reason why my all black is still wet. Um, here it's wet. Here it's wet. Everywhere it's wet. So what I would suggest, guys, is that you take a couple minutes break and wait until all your black is dry because it's very hard um, to work with black and add other colors when it's still wet because it will pick up and it will create a mess and everything's going to turn gray and that's just not a good look at all. So I would suggest that you just pause this video and let it all dry or if maybe you're working slower than my, me or maybe your paint just generally dries faster, you may already have everything dry. In which case, just continue. You don't need to pause anything. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it. I'm going to pause my video. I'm going to let it dry. It dries fast as well. So it shouldn't be long. It should be like two, three minutes. But it would make no difference to you because I'm going to unpause the recording as soon as it is uh, drier. And I'm going to continue. So for you, it's going to be just like one second. I'm going to do this and it's going to be dry and I'll be back. All right, guys, my painting is not fully dry, but it's pretty dry. So we can continue. And what I want to work on now is I want to work on my flowers only because this part is drier than the upper part for me. So this is going to give my upper part a little more to dry. And I'm going to start with my light yellow ones. So I'm going to be using my medium brush. And I'm going to take some white, mix it with a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to start dabbing them. They're going to be dabbed in lines with being a bit wider on the bottom and smaller on top. So you see it's something like that. You see it's a bit bigger on the bottom and it's smaller on top. I'm going to dab a couple of those here. Some of them can start higher up, some of them can start lower. That's our one kind of flowers. Uh, let's add some of those right here too. All right, that's done. Now I'm gonna move to my small brush. And next I'm gonna be using my pink paint. So I'm going to take my small brush and I'm going to start by making dark pink. So I'm going to take a little bit of white, a little bit of red, mix them up, make nice saturated pink. And with this one, um, let me show you, I'm going to get close here to show you how I'm going to do those flowers. So it's going to be one brush stroke like this, then from the left, from the right, from the left, from the right, and so on. So just going down. Um, from outside in, one side, second side, one side, second side, and so on. We're gonna add a couple of those. You can add as many of those as you want. So you can make me a little braid in a way. All 
right, that's good. And I want to add a couple of those on the other side too. Somewhere right here. This should be enough there. So now I'm going to add a second layer on them. So to the same color, I'm going to add a little bit more white to make it lighter. And with this light pink, I'm going to add a second layer. So let's go here first. All right, then I'm going to move to my blue and I'm going to make some medium blue first. So I'm going to use some dark blue and some white. And with this medium ish blue version, I'm going to do the same thing with braided um, flowers, the braid looking ones, anywhere where you want to really. Add a couple on the other side here. All right, now I'm going to add a second layer on those. So, to the same color, I'm going to add more white, make light blue. And with this, I'm going to highlight them just the same way that I've done with my pink. All right, and now I'm going to do my last flowers here, which is going to be white flowers. So I'm just going to wash off my small brush really well. And I'm going to take straight white. And I'm going to make them flicking my brush from the outside in and rotating the angle. Basically, they look like actual flowers. You can make five petals, six petal ones, four petal ones, as many as you want. I'm trying to make them different in size too, some bigger, some smaller. And once you have a couple actual flowers, then add some dabs, so some dots basically. Some bigger, some smaller. See, I'm starting between my flowers, and then we're going to spread it a little bit. So I'm going to add a couple dubs here. 
I'm going to add a couple dots here, a couple here, uh, a couple some more here in between. And the last thing that I want to do is I'm going to add yellow middles to this flower. So I'm going to take my yellow. You can mix it with white or you don't have to. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of white. You see how little I'm making of it? And I'm going to start by just adding middles to my flowers first. And once I have middles um, to my flowers, I'm going to add a couple yellow dabs around to just a few. All right, our bottom is done, or at least for me. I'm happy with this. I don't want to be adding anything. If you guys feel like something should be added or can be added, absolutely, go for it. Add anything that you want. You can add more flowers. You can add different kinds of flowers. Just fill it to your liking. And then I'm going to add a little bit of purple onto my tree trunks as well, maybe a little bit more white. And the reason why is... From the first try, sometimes white gets a little transparent, so I'm going to start with white. I'm going to take some white. I'm just going to add a little bit more with my square brush. You don't have to. If you first time, if you when you did your white tree trunks, it turned out actually white. You don't have to do this. In my case, it's a little more transparent than I would like it to be, so I'm just going to add a couple brush strokes of straight white again, just a few. And then I'm going to add a little bit of purple. So I'm going to make my purple. So I'm going to take some white. I'm going to add some red to it to make pink. Then I'm going to add a little bit of blue. And here I have maybe a little bit more red actually. Here I have about medium purple. I'm just using a little bit of this paint. I'm going to add it closer to the areas that are already dark. So maybe even more red to make it a little warmer. Oh yeah, beautiful. in this area that are already quite dark. If you overlap your white a little bit, it's not a problem at all, but just don't aim to cover all your white. Aim to cover uh, at them where your black connects to your white, somewhere there. Awesome. And now I'm going to move to my top and I'm going to use my medium brush, so this one. And I'm going to start by mixing light green. So I'm going to start by taking lots and lots of yellow because I'm going to need lots of this paint. I'm going to mix some white into it and a little bit of blue, not a lot of blue. Yeah, that's a good color. Maybe a little bit darker than that, just a touch. Oh yeah. And with this color, I'm just going to dab. Lots and lots of dabbing here. I'm going to start by dabbing the top. Leave certain areas and dabbed and really, really visible as well. You don't have to evenly distribute it. I'll bring it a little over on the side. And lower on the side too. So both sides gonna get quite low. And then we're gonna add it over branches. So just choose whichever branches you would like to add it on. So for me, I'm gonna add it onto the branch right here.
and I'm going to add it on to this branch right here. But you choose your own branches. You don't have to add it on the same branches that I'm adding it. And then I'm going to add it a little bit here. I'm going to imagine them put some tree at the back. Press them on. Maybe this tree at the back will have some as well. But honestly, wherever you want it, we're just dressing it up. And then for my next color, I actually need a bit more white. So let me quickly get some more white because I'm completely out of white here. Right here is more white. And now you can either continue using a medium brush or switch to a small brush and we're going to do yellow mixed with white. So I'm going to take some white, mix it with some yellow. And with, you can add a little smidge of green to it if you want to so it's not so yellow, especially if your green is already dry. But if it's still wet, it will blend anyway so you don't have to add it. And with this, we're going to highlight it. So we're going to add accent color. So I'm going to add a little couple of dabs here. This color. Couple of dabs right here. So just accenting your um, greenery that you already added with this color. All right, and now only two things that are left for us here is one, to sign in, two, to do your edges. If you haven't done your edges, I'm going to talk to you about how to do it in a second. So let's sign it first. You can put your name, your initials, anything that you would like. I'm going to put my initials right here. And now after that, let's talk about edges. If you've done your edges as we went, you already have beautiful edges that match your painting. You don't need to do anything. For those who haven't done your edges, you have a couple options. Option number one, you can color match it. So again, whatever you see here, you make again and you extend on your edge. Um, you're going to need to mix quite a bit of colors, but also it's not not doable. It's very doable. You can here just fill in with one green. You don't have to do the whole shebang of colors. Here you can do one green as well. And here you can do light purple, let's say, and dark purple. So you don't have to mix all of them. Very doable. Um, if you're not into mixing and you would rather not, you can just take one color currently present on your painting, such for example is green because you have lots of it, and just do your edges in that one color. And for those of you guys who like a little bit more contrast, you can take straight black and do your edges for the black. And I'm going to show you what that will look like. It makes it look almost framed. You see? So when you hang it on your wall, and hopefully you do, it's going to look like you have a thin black frame around your uh, painting on the sides of your canvas. Again, it's not for everyone. It's quite contrast look, do you see? But I personally like it. This is my favorite. This is my favorite. This is my go-to. But I want you guys to have options. So now you have options and you know what you can do. So it's up to you to choose which way would work best for you as far as edges. And guys, if you haven't liked this video and subscribed to our channel, you definitely should do that. We have a lot more wonderful tutorials coming up. We do this um, live on Facebook. Actually, this is a video tutorial, but we do have, sorry, not Facebook, 
We have the YouTube live events. I would say at least about around once a week. Sometimes more than that. So feel free to like our channel, subscribe to our channel. So then you stay in touch and updated on what is coming next. And we have all kinds of different mediums. We have acrylic, we have watercolor, we have drawing, we have color pencil, we have regular pencil, we have all kinds of stuff. And definitely check out all our previous video tutorials as well. We have plenty, plenty, plenty of things to paint. And if you guys would like to share your results, we have a Facebook group where we encourage everyone to share their results. You can see it in the description of this video. There is a name of Facebook group, so please feel free to share your results there. If you're not shy and if you don't mind doing that, we would love to see how they turned out. And I'm sure other people who participated in this tutorial would also love to see how they turned out. So we have all of them in the same place. And guys, if you had fun and you enjoyed painting with me and you want to say thank you, you can do that through tipping me. You don't have to, but tips are always welcome and always appreciated. Thank you so much for joining me. And let's do this again in another week. Bye, guys.